I'm really pleased now to move to our first speaker, who is Carol Ann. She's from Australia, from the Lesbian Action Group. Thank you so much, Carol Ann, for coming on and talking to us about what's happening in Australia. I'm Carol, and I'm in Australia, as Joe said, um, and I'm spokesperson for the Lesbian Action Group, LAG, and for the Lesbian Club, which we've just started. Um, my activism goes back 40 years, and it's been devoted to lesbian act activism, building lesbian community, um, creating events, uh, making connections. Um, and some years ago, now I am... Um, I thought, well, I've done enough activism. I'm just going to retire, put my feet up and potter in the garden and just play with my pets and do stuff like that you do when you retire. Well, seeing it, all the stuff that's that's been happening and the erasure of lesbian culture and the state of things with, young lesbians in particular I, I i couldn't i couldn't keep pottering i had to get back in there um so about a year ago now um well last july after the let women speak rally in melbourne um when it all went really pear-shaped here and uh, lots of women were traumatized by that there was a group of us got together, a group of lesbians got together and said um, enough of this whinging and talking and being scared, we've got to do something, we've got to do some action. Um, so we decided that that's what we would do and we formed the Lesbian Action Group. It was just an informal group of us, there were 12 of us and um, the first action that we decided to do was to um, apply for an exemption to run lesbian-only events. Now, two of us in that group had, back in 2003, had um, been organising a lesbian event and been challenged by a trans person, a man, um, and were told that we needed to go get an exemption that we could um, then hold an event. So we did that back in 2003 and we actually won the exemption. Um, but then another man, trans person, may, uh, challenged that and so we lost the exemption. And then a couple of years later, um, it happened again. We And this time it went to court and cost money. So... For 20 years now, um, our lesbian community has been underground, as it has in many countries, I think. We've only had been able to have private events. Um, we haven't um, been able to advertise. We have been having lots of events. Um, in Victoria, it's been like three a year. We'd have camps and... Um, um, all sorts of events, but they were private and they were underground. And many of us, as you can see, are aging and it gets to a stage where we're just dying out and um, we weren't being able to let those lesbians who aren't in, in the, the, the networks know that there is a culture still there. There is, there is events still there. So we decided that we would, again, in 2023, 20 years later, go for an exemption again. And we knew that by from the state of the Sex Discrimination Act that, you know, we, we weren't going to get it. Um, but we decided to do it anyway so that we could raise awareness. And that's our main aim at the moment is just to raise awareness um, and I think we've been pretty successful at that. 
Um, so we, we put in for an exemption to the Australian Human Rights Commission to run an event on International Lesbian Day in October last year for just for lesbians and we said we wanted to do it at the Victorian Pride Centre which um, you know is a million multi-million dollar LGBTQAIA plus whatever um, monolith there which we're not allowed into so again we tried booking a, a room there knowing that they were going to turn us down but that that's what we wanted we wanted to be able to publicize it so this was back in um, July so by August we had our exemption application in um, and then we had to ask for letters of support and we got them from all over the world it was just fantastic um, overall we got about around about 300 letters from everyone and if you're someone who wrote um, one of those letters of support thank you so much I read a lot of them and it, it's just wonderful um, and so the the Australian Human Rights Commission then had to make decision about our exemption and they did a preliminary um, decision and as we had expected they said no of course you can't you can't discriminate like that you have to that's not inclusive um, you can't have a lesbian event on International Lesbian Day without inviting the whole world. Um, so the next step then was to ask for more letters of support, which we got, so that they ca then came up with their final um, decision. And that was in October. It was after International Lesbian Day, so the whole thing was moot anyway because um, the decision was too late, even if they'd said yes. What we were asking for was an exemption um, for five years. You can get a temporary exemption under the Sex Discrimination Act if it is to equalise um, between... Um, what's it called, um, groups, uh, groups that need need help, anti-discrimination. Um, and so we got the final decision in October and we had actually moved them along a bit, which was quite impressive um, because there we were, no lawyers, no nothing, just... <laughs> fumbling our way through it all and we'd moved them from no you've got to include everyone don't be silly and this this is testimony to the quality of the submissions and letters of support that came in from everybody um they moved from you've got to let everybody in to okay well we'll concede that you you know you you can um exclude heterosexual men and we'll let you exclude gay men. That's fair enough. And we'll let you exclude um, heterosexual women. But you can't exclude transgender women who are lesbian. Um, and that was their final decision. So... And they can do that because the Australian Human Rights Commission has declared that um, sex is not binary and we can all change our sex over the course of our life. Um, and that's backed up, of course, by our laws, which say that's true. Anyone can, in, in most states in Australia now, except New South Wales, um, can change their sex on their birth certificates and you can do it every 12 months it's laughable if it wasn't so damn serious so we got this decision which was no surprise and and we had 
um, publicised it as as wide as we could. Um, and as part of that final decision, they they told us that um, firstly that we had the right of appeal, that we could uh, appeal to the um, administrative appeals tribunal. Um, the second thing they told us, or they would seem to be pushing us towards um, a permanent exemption, which is a, is part of the Sex Discrimination Act, that if you are a membership-based club, um, you can get to choose whoever you want as your members. And as long as you run events for members only, then that's fine. No one can complain or um, make a complaint against you. So we took both of those bits of advice. And even though it's it's not our ultimate aim, we decided we'd go down the, the, the road of um, setting up a, a membership-based club so that we could have events um, for lesbians only and we could vet who came into our club. So we, we set up the lesbian club. We did that at the beginning of the year. It's been a roller coaster ride, the whole thing. I'm exhausted, but there you go. That's the life of an activist. So we set up the lesbian club and we're doing really well. We've got a com conference, a lesbian conference coming up in two weeks time. And we've, we've had a calendar of events all year. Um, and we're getting new members, women who were so isolated. They had no idea there were other lesbians out there. We we're even having success with some younger lesbians, i.e. under 30. Um, we've got, five of them talking at our conference coming up so you know that's a success it still means that we're semi underground we're a private club but at least we can we can reach out and we can have these events now legally and they're not going to be able to challenge us we just have to grow our membership which is is what we need to do and if you're in australia because it's Australia wide, not just Victoria. If you're Australia in Australia and you're a lesbian, please join the Lesbian Club. We need the numbers, the strength in numbers. The other thing that we did was take up, well, we thought about appealing. And by that stage, we were all just worn out by it all. It was quite stressful. Um and said, no, let's, you know, we've we've done what we set out to do. Let's not go any further. And besides which, we're bumbling around here. We don't have a clue what we're doing. And then at the 11th hour, i.e. the day before the appeal application was due to go in, um, I thought, no, we've come too far. We have to do this. Um, so we met... We managed to find a lawyer, a barrister, Lee Howard, and Anna Kerr from the Feminist Legal Clinic was our solicitor, and um, Megan Blake was our researcher. A fantastic legal team. We, we, we could not have done better. We put together um, some submissions, challenged the Australian Human Rights Commission to try and get that decision turned over again we're not sure i mean it's because of because of their definition of sex i mean how can you get around that if any man can say he's a lesbian so we're not really expecting to win it but again we want to make as much publicity out of it as possible and awareness raising as possible there's all sorts of stories from the tribunal which you know will have to be for another day um it was actually quite fun i was on the the witness stand for three hours and i got to to tell legal people that no men cannot be women and no men cannot be lesbians and um all sorts of great stuff that we all say to each other in private but here i was being able to say it um in a legal setting um, and it was great.
I quite enjoyed myself actually. Um, and I, I really think the Australian Human Rights Commission had underestimated us because we had bumbled around previously. They didn't realise that we had a really good legal team at this stage of the of the the case, and they were very underprepared for it. So, you know, our, Lee, our barrister, is actually optimistic. He ran a, a um, instead of cha challenging what is a lesbian, he ran the case on freedom of association um, and freedom of assembly and freedom from being assimilated into the LGV. TQ alphabet soup. So it's a different sort of tack to take and it might work. He says we have 60% chance of winning. And if we lose, it's not on our arguments, it's on the stupid laws that are here in Australia that we just can't get around at the moment. So we really need to be challenging those laws at every opportunity. That's a really potted version of what we've been through in the last 18 months. Thank you so much for reactivating and getting being being so active and, and working on this and getting so much publicity and then making these really coherent arguments. Um, there are a couple of questions. Somebody's asked, what's the name of the case? I know you said before, but they came into the chat afterwards. So would you tell yeah, us again? It, it's lag or Lesbian Action Group versus AHRC, Australian Human Rights Commission. And it's um, at a tribunal. It's not actually a legal court as such. It's, um, it's a place where you go to protest to, to, to say that decision wasn't okay. You've had quite reasonable amounts of success, uh, but you thought you probably wouldn't win, but it would raise awareness. And have you had a lot of feedback from the general public or from the lesbian community or the feminist commu community that it has really raised the profile of these issues? I, I think it has. Um, we have a presence on um, X. It's at Active Lesbians, if anyone wants to follow us. Um, but yes, it, it, it is hard to know. But it seems that whilst a lot of people somehow in their head seem to accept that men can be with women when you ask them well can men be lesbians it's a step too far for a lot of a lot of people so i think in that in those terms it does raise awareness it makes people do a, a double take as you know men lesbians I, hmm, 